Today we're going to talk about foil adhesive and I'm going to show you several different ways to apply it. Hey there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and today, today is all about foil adhesive. Okay, this is our brand, Artsyville Embellishments Foil Adhesive and I'm going to talk about what this stuff is as well as show you several different ways to apply it and to get the best results you want from your application. So as you can see in my container, the stuff is milky white. Okay, it's pretty thick as well. And I usually will take it out of the container and put it on what I call a sticky plate. And now this is several plates that are stuck together. And if this one starts to get dirty, I just put a clean plate on top of it and just keep stacking them. Now, you don't have to have so many stacked on top of each other, but I do recommend grab yourself a foam plate and you can definitely use it over and over and over again. Okay, so I'm pulling out some of the adhesive. I'm putting it on my plate because we're going to talk about different ways to apply this. So as you can see in the container, it was milky white and it will go on milky white. The darker your surface is that you're working on, and I'm on black, so black's going to show you everything. Okay, so that's going to be a really good surface to uh, demonstrate on. The lighter the surface gets, you don't always see how milky white it is, but it still is going on milky white and needs to dry till it's thoroughly clear. So you can go right out of the container and brush directly onto your surface. You are going to probably get it on there pretty thick and you are also going to see your brush strokes, okay? So you can see if I go all these different directions, you can see all of my application marks, okay? I refer to them as MOA, Methods of Application. You can see everything that I've done here. Okay, I'm moving some of my tools out of the way. So if I am going to brush it on, I do try, I'm trying to do this where my hand's not directly in the way, I try to make sure that I have nice, smooth strokes, that my strokes are all going in the same direction, trying to keep them straight and at least when that dries, you might see some brush stroke, but it's not like all over the place and going crazy. The other thing I like to tell everybody about is the fact that this adhesive is not a self-leveling product. So whatever I leave behind, it's going to dry like that. So when I do use an artist brush, and I do recommend an artist type brush, I do not recommend grabbing what I call a chip brush or just like a big type of paint brush because you're probably going to see way more brush stroke as well. So as you go from a small surface to a larger surface, we're going to go to a roller. If I am brushing it on and I'm trying to get it to lay down as smooth as possible, I will also grab what we call a mist spray bottle. And I'm just going to mist on a little bit of water. Okay, that's just H2O in there. And I will mix it on the plate first before I will use it. So I'm mixing it into the adhesive first. You don't want to add probably anywhere than maybe one, two, three percent max. You could be reducing the tackiness that is needed from the foil adhesive. So don't add too, too much water. Okay, again, I'm going to brush it on. This time it's going on, I want to say a little smoother because it has that water in there to kind of just float out my brush strokes a little bit. And I'm just trying to use a nice soft touch and get that on as smooth and as even as possible. Again, I'm still going to probably have some brush stroke, but the water is going to help it level out a little bit. And you're basically going to have some brush stroke no matter what. Okay, there's going to be some texture that you're going to be dealing with no matter what tool you do use. You can also grab a sponge brush. I'm just going to pick up some more adhesive and you can apply it with a foam brush. One thing I want you guys to note here really well is you can see how thin it's going on when I'm using a foam brush and be aware of that because it is not going to lay down as much material as 
your art brush will. Okay, so I put more on here just to even come back and try to load on more product, but it is getting it on thinner, um, which sometimes that can be a problem if you are on something a little bit more porous. Putting it on with a foam brush is going to keep it thinner, which means it's going to possibly even soak into the surface a little bit and give you a lower tack. So you can now see just the difference between using an art brush and using a foam brush, how much less material has been applied. Now, if I'm on a good primed surface, like we are on Bondego here, which is a paint and primer all in one, it is a sealed surface. Nothing should be soaking into it. I should still have a good transfer. But if you were just on acrylic paint, something that doesn't seal or self-seal um, itself, okay, as far as the base paint, it's not a self-sealing product, a little bit might soak into that paint and you will lower your tack. So just food for thought, things to be aware of. You're still gonna have some brush stroke, even though it's applying it on there thinner. You don't see as much of it right now because it's thinner and not looking as milky white, but you're still gonna have a brush stroke. The other technique that I have used many of times is if I don't wanna see an actual brush stroke, then I'll use the foam brush and pounce it. This is great when you just want kind of like overall texture or even if you're working on some ornate design that is a, a pattern that's cut out of wood and you only want it like on the top of the letters or the top of the design, pouncing works great. Now that gave me a ton of texture, you guys. So if you want to try to soften that, you can use the brush, maybe even flip it over to a cleaner side and lay it more perpendicular into the surface and pounce again. And you'll be able to soften out some of that texture. Okay, you're still gonna have texture. You're still gonna have some method of application, but it is gonna be a more uniform overall, just kind of stippled effect underneath the foil instead of a distinctive brush stroke line. You can even come back. Sometimes I'll just even wait for that to dry down a little bit more and come back and pounce it out again. Every time I pounce over it, it is going to normally soften out the texture and give me just a little bit more smooth surface. As you can see, there are options. Just one of those things where you might wanna practice and play and figure out what is gonna be the best method for your project. Okay, I've also used a sea sponge. So if you've got a sea sponge, you're gonna to go to the sink, you're gonna completely immerse it under water, get it wet, and then use paper towels or a towel and squeeze out all that excess water because you don't want anything dripping in here. But if you're looking for some type of random texture, you can pounce onto your sticky plate to pick up your adhesive and then we can apply it to the surface that way as well. So if we weren't looking for uh, full coverage, maybe we're doing a piece of furniture and we're trying to get a little bit more random in our application, a sea sponge would work really great. It is gonna provide a little bit of texture in the application but you're gonna have more random. There's areas that definitely did not get any, I'm trying to get a good view from here, that did not receive any of the adhesive. So those areas that have no adhesive will have no foil transfer. Okay, if you get into a bigger area and you're needing to apply the foil adhesive to a larger surface, I am gonna recommend you grab yourself a roller. I like to use a low nap roller because it's gonna create the least amount of texture. And I am just gonna go ahead and dip into my foil adhesive. Oops, I just dripped everywhere. We'll clean that up. And I'm just working my roller into the material. Still just using my sticky plate. Works great for small rollers. And then roll it onto your surface. And it doesn't matter how I get it on there, just get it on there, okay? I'm going in every different direction. If I see anything that got into the surface, you can just use your finger and pick it out. But in the end, 
I want you to roll all in one direction and hopefully eliminate any lap lines. You can either roll really super soft, okay? You can barely hear that I'm rolling at all. And I'm, every time I'm rolling over that, I'm kind of flattening out and smoothing it a little bit more. So you will definitely still have a really light stippled effect, but it's going to be very soft and subtle. It's going to be even way more subtle than pouncing it on with your sponge brush, but at least it will be uniformed and give you a nice base. So those are basically my favorite ways and different tools and techniques for applying the foil adhesive to your surface. Now, once you get it on there, y'all, we got to wait. We got to wait for it to dry and not just dry, but it has to dry until it gets to what we call a firm tack. And before I get into that mess, I'm going to clean that up. This is super, super important, you guys. Don't let it just dry for a few minutes. Let it dry until it has thoroughly dried and cured to it's getting to what we call a firm tack, because that is going to give you your best release of your foils. As you can see, any area where it went on super thin, it's already starting to clear out. You barely see any little bit of white coming through here, milky white. The other ones that are thicker are still looking milky white. Even where I use the roller, the roller's clearing down uh, faster because it was applied thinner than brushing it on. You want to let it clear completely out. Once it starts clearing out, it's in that drying stage. I can't say that I have not been successful with only allowing it to dry 20 minutes, but I know I'm normally gonna be more successful if I let it dry an hour. If I'm working on a project where I'm trying to get the absolute best release, you guys, let it dry overnight. You will thank me for that piece of advice. Foiling is wonderful, but all these little tips and tricks are gonna help you to be way more successful and also figure out what type of texture you might want underneath your foils or what will work best with your project. I thank you so much for hanging out with me. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and look forward to the next video with more tips and tricks of working with your foils.